Hi everybody, it's Martin from Branco Customs here, back with another one of my knife making videos. In this one I'm going to show you the first ever frame lock titanium folding knife that I've ever made and uh, bring you on the story of what it took in order to make this. So we jump right in here with me uh, laying out the template onto a piece of steel. Now, here we've already missed half the story because just coming up with a design that's going to be functional for a frame lock like this is no mean feat. There's so much that has to be absolutely just so and very precise about making one of these that I've got to admit I was a little bit concerned about how well it was going to go. So I did my due diligence, did a lot of research and um, as you'll see from here on in, there's plenty of little challenges to overcome. I start off by drilling and reaming the pivot hole on the blade. Now again, this blade is made out of a very nice piece of Damascus stainless steel and um, I didn't want to get this wrong. So I took my time with everything and with this, it's a four millimeter hardened stainless steel pivot pin that I'm going to be putting in this hole. So I drilled it out to a 3.8 millimeter, went through with a four millimeter reamer to make sure it would be a nice precise fit. I then had to counterbore the hole in order to put the special ball bearing races in. Then without the use of a rotary table, I decided it would be a best idea in order to stitch drill a few holes around the main pivot area, which is where the uh, stop pin is going to travel. I then later on went and blended all these holes together to make a nice radius that goes around the outside perimeter of the pivot pin. So a little bit of angle grinding later and I've got something that starts to resemble a blade. I then set about fitting the thumb stud. Again, every time I have to drill a tiny little 2mm hole through a blade like this, I get a little bit cringy because it only takes a split second, you can end up snapping a drill bit off in a blade and have to start again. So, uh, again, due care and diligence. Luckily, it all went without a hitch and the thumb stud fitted just right.
With all knives, but especially folding knives, it's imperative that the blade is 100% flat. So I took it then to the granite sanding block in order to smooth off all sides of the blade, ready for profiling. Now the blade's generally done, it's time to turn my hand over to making the main titanium side scales. Again, titanium is an absolute devil to work with. You gotta make sure that all your tools are very sharp or you're gonna end up with them binding and snapping off in the blink of an eye. Or even work hardening the titanium as you use it. So, again with this, I start off with the main pivot. It's the most critical point on the knife and everything's gotta be just so. So what I do is I, again, drill it with a 3.8 millimeter, ream it with a four millimeter, and then counter bore it so that pin can't go all the way through. It's just sat in there, held nice and snug for a tight fit against the blade. The frame lock side of this knife is cut from a piece of 7mm thick grade 5 titanium. So it took probably at least an hour or so milling the actual scale away from the rest of the block. Again this is no mean feat, you have to spray very cold compressed air at it the whole time to save overheating the drill bit, it's very slow painstaking work. For a production knife comparison, to cut titanium like this you could put it on an industrial abrasive water jet machine and have a profile like this cut out absolutely pristine within a couple of minutes. However, this is not what I'm about. Once the scale is freed from the block, it's over to the grinder for a bit of profiling. Again, working with titanium like this has extreme hazards as it will very easily set fire to things around you. The sparks basically won't go out, so I grind directly into a tray filled with water and then very quickly, after a few minutes, have to change that water because the sparks lay on the top of it, in which case other sparks will bounce off and then try setting fire to other things. So now that both the blade and the lock side of the knife are built, it's time to put the pivot pin in and the stop pin and have a quick look at how the action is going to work. With all tasks to do with making things, it's always better to leave a little extra on the item so you can remove it later rather than taking too much off because then you can't put it back on. So here I'm using a little carbide Dremel bit in order to remove tiny amounts of steel from the blade so I can manipulate just how far it opens and just how far it closes by choosing where the stop pin is going to end. So now the blade is functioning, I turn my attention to cutting the lock bar. Again this is just a long thin cut about 0.8 of a millimetre wide that travels almost the full length of the lock side of the knife. This ends up becoming the bar that will lock out behind the blade in order to stop it from closing. This process starts by drilling two different holes that are then joined together by slitting in between them. As a point of interest, when drilling titanium, high speed steel drill bits will not do. Unfortunately, they're just too soft and they'll lose their edge very quickly, which will lead to the drill bit rubbing the titanium and causing it to work hard as you're trying to put a hole through it. So I use nothing less than a good quality cobalt stainless steel drill bit and with those you still only get a few holes before you then have to either resharpen them or use a new bit.
Here you can see that I fixed the scale in the vise on my milling machine and then using an arbor slitting saw in order to very 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 slowly cut a slot between the two holes. Here I'm using a bull-ended carbide mill in order to relieve an area at the base of the lock bar. When machined down to about 1.6 millimeters thick, the remaining titanium has fantastic spring-like properties. And here's another extremely cringe-worthy moment when I have to start drilling a hole for the detent ball. Again, this is a 1.6mm ball that's squidged permanently into a 1.5mm diameter hole. Now, when you start talking about drilling titanium with 1.5mm drill bits, things get a little bit dicey. But luckily, all went without a hitch. I then turned my attention to creating the liner for the show side of the knife. For this I used a piece of 2mm thick grade 5 titanium. I went through the stages again of drilling and then reaming out the area for the pivot pin. I then used the frame lock side as a template in order to get a precise match for the alignment for the stop pin. And then I'm back onto the milling machine again for trying to cut the 2mm thick titanium profile away from the main plate.
and then a very quick rough profiling of that side. It'll be tidied up later to line up with the lock side. To add another challenge, my client requested to have a piece of the same Damascus as would be on the blade as the front bolster on the show side of the knife. Um, so for this, again, I used the exact same cutoff from the same bullet and then heat treated that to go with it. Again, it's very important that everything lines up. So again, through here, I had to make sure that the pivot pin and the stop pin all lined up perfectly. Now that most of the main parts of the knife were together, I turned my attention to getting the blade heat treated and before that, grinding a nice hollow grind onto the bevels. I added a couple of countersunk holes onto the bolster that's got an angle on them that's identical to the M3 screws I'm going to use to assemble. All of this had to be done because I was going to heat treat the bolster as well. That's particularly important because again in order to get the same patterning on the Damascus and in order to enhance corrosion resistance all this steel needs to be heat treated. I then turn my attention to the backspacer. Again for this, I drill holes at 3.8 millimeters, reading them with a four, and then use the exact same hardened stainless steel pivot pins in order to align both halves of the knife together. Then just a little bit of shaping around the profile of the bolster before it goes in the oven.
You'll notice it's particularly important when I'm grinding, I stick my belly out as far as possible for enhanced stability. And then wrap all the blades in stainless steel foil, ready for the oven. The bolster also gets wrapped up in its own little envelope so it can cook alongside the blade. And into Mordor they go. I then add a little countersinking onto the lock side of the knife. In order to do this, I use a 3mm drill bit, which is what couples with the hole for the 3mm screw. I use that to realign the piece in the drill, and then swap it out for the countersunk bit, so I know that when it comes down, it's going to be perfectly concentric. Then out of Mordor both the blade and the bolster come as the same thickness they can both go in the plate quench together. They get clamped down between some aluminium plates and have cold compressed air blown up and vigorously. This helps to cool them down quickly enough that the steel hardens extremely hard. They then go off for a couple of tempering cycles for a couple of hours a time in order to soften the metal just a little bit to make it less brittle. I then take the opportunity to run a quick 45 degree travel around the lock side of the knife prior to doing the rest of the shaping. I then move my attention to creating the backspacer and the pocket clip. Again both of these are cut from the very same 7mm thick uh, piece of titanium that I used to create the lock side of the knife. I use the lock side of the knife in order to template the whole pitch for the backspacer. Here you can see me drilling a couple of very small holes in order to tap for attachment 
of the pocket clip. Again, I use those tiny holes as a template in order to drill through into the actual pocket clip piece of titanium. This is a surefire way of doing things so you know everything is going to line up and fit together when it's done. I then get a very small M2 tap and very carefully tap the titanium so that it can receive a screw in order to attach the pocket clip. I must, must have watched dozens of videos of people telling me how that you need a special tap in order to tap titanium and that you're going to break a hundred taps and that you need a tapmatic machine that's going to cost you a fortune and so to be fair I was bricking it and I was prepared to break taps and have to remake another pocket clip because there were bits of taps snapped off inside but someone was obviously looking down on me that day and all went without a hitch. Here you can see I'm back on the milling machine again and I'm actually relieving the excess material from within the pocket clip. Then back over to the grinder to profile around the edge of the pocket clip. It worked out fairly well that I could leave the backspace around pocket clip attached together whilst grinding this so I had a little bit of a handle to hold. I then flipped it around and started profiling the backspacer. Here I'm checking the head diameter of the screws that are going to be used to attach the pocket clip. These are actually going to be recessed inside the frame of the knife. As you can see, I tapped the clip itself earlier, so they're going to go through the frame and screw into the clip.
As you can see, once it's done, it seats seamlessly into the handle scale. I can't even begin to tell you the quantity of different purchases that I had to make in order to build this knife of different diameter drill bits, different diameter reamers, so many different screws, so many different taps in order to make threads for those screws, it was quite mind boggling. So as you can see that pocket clip fixes to the knife beautifully. And again, it's ground down to that magical 1.6 millimeter thick, which helps the titanium act nicely as a spring. I then take the opportunity for a very quick fit up to check everything's in order. I then turn my attention to doing some nice sculpting and profiling of the lock side handle scale. I use the slack in the belt of my grinder in order to create some really nice curves. After much more blending, the whole handle starts to look a lot more organic. So I then turn my attention to another one of the most critical phases of any locking knife and that is cutting free the lock bar from the rest of the frame. This again has to be extremely precise as it's what will lock in behind the blade and hold it open. It was typical that at this moment I needed to use my matte gas in order to heat up the spring section of the lock bar. As you can see my proper torch is sat in the background here completely empty so I managed to improvise and use the camping stove in order to heat it up to red hot before giving it a slight bend. So now the lock bar is cut free and sprung, it's time to insert the detent ball, which is what's going to hold the blade closed. This then gives me my first opportunity to test out the knife. The way that the lock bar and the blade uh, interface is extremely important and again I think I use off the top of my head about a seven degree angle set between both the back edge of the blade and the front edge of the lock bar. This creates the perfect angle so that you don't end up with one piece locking against the other so hard that you can't unlock it and that's vice versa easy enough to undo the knife 
when you want. Plus, also securing a nice locker. I then move my attention to the show side of the knife, where I start to hear grind a 45 degree dovetail onto the inside of the Damascus bolster. And I then use a nice bright green G10 liner material. All the G10 and carbon parts are then glued up using a very specialist G-Flex epoxy. This is slow setting epoxy that takes over a day to dry. Once dried, it's back over to the grinder to do some final shaping. And of course, now reassemble it to double check everything again. I must have assembled and disassembled this knife a hundred times. Off camera I then went back and tidied up all the blade after the heat treatment and then went on to doing the finishing. So here I covered all the important parts of the blade with nail varnish ready to go into the acid so those bits will be protected and their dimensions won't be changed. This was my first experience using muriatic acid and oh my gosh, this stuff is potent. I dropped my clean degreased blade down into the acid and the reaction started immediately. Bubbles and even smoke slash gas expansion coming straight out of it. After a minute or so, I took it out of the witch's brew and dumped it into some clean water which has got bicarbonate of soda in it. This helps to neutralize the acid so it doesn't keep eating away at the steel when I don't want it to. The acid really brought out the definition between the different layers of Damascus. But unfortunately, it also took away the shine off the blade. So a quick buff later and it was all set to go. Some of you may be looking at my buffing wheel thinking, wow, that looks retro, I've never seen anything like that before, but sure enough it is retro. And it's in fact a family heirloom. Uh, I recently inherited this from my grandfather, who actually used this for his daily uh, work as a clock repairman. And uh, the motor itself actually came out of his parents' washing machine sometime long, long ago. And it's still working fine. They just don't make them like they used to. It took a little bit of courage to dunk my side scale into the acid, but knowing in theory full well that 
Neither the glue, the carbon, nor the titanium should be affected by the acid. I took the plunge, and luckily it all worked out okay. If you look carefully, you can even see the vapors coming off of this thing. I also carbonized the lock face of this knife. This is a particularly important feature where I actually had to build a machine specifically. It's kind of like a small arc welder that deposits amounts of uh, tungsten carbide, one of the hardest metal alloys known to man, onto the front edge of titanium, which is a little bit softer. So in order to prevent over time the hardened steel of the blade wearing away at the front of the lock face and creating a sloppy lock, um, this is done in order to make sure that both interfacing faces are as hard as each other. Next up with some spine filing in the titanium backspacer. And here you can see some quick before and afters of all the components that I ended up using a bead blast finish. So here we have the finished article. If you like my videos and the things I create and would like to see more of it, please hit like, hit subscribe, and then if you also hit the notification bell, you'll be notified as soon as I release some new material on YouTube. Why not check out my website for the most comprehensive information, www.brancocustoms.com. Thank you.